We'll begin with a few questions from within the room here. Georgie, congrats on the win, man. Um, how are you feeling coming out of that one? Obviously, it was it was a pretty uh, a pretty needed victory, right? Yeah, man. Uh, uh, first of all, judges here. Whew. They're, I don't know. I don't think it was split. I saw it as unanimous. But even last week, Brandon Gertz, Henry Corrales, how the hell that was split decision, you know? Henry won all three rounds. But yeah, you never, again, I knew Bryce was a tough opponent. You know, anyone Bellator signs is not a chump. So I need to get tested against guys like this, you know? But other than that, if Miles Jury not making his stupid YouTube videos, I want to get a rematch with that idiot. You know, he, he, last time we fought, he was sitting here talking about title shots. I don't know, that guy's delusional, so. But other than that, man, I dedicate this fight to all the Armenians that are dying right now. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy I won. Talk to me about representing your country because that's something that you've always done and, and you know, you use one of the biggest platforms to do it. So how important is that to you, especially now? Uh, I swear, man, I know I have a lot of fights, but this was a big pressure on me because so many people were sending me messages and supporting me. Uh, the weirdest thing I was, when I put down the Armenian flag, I started getting death threats on my phone. Like you could ask my coaches, just, just send me pictures of dead kids, dead families, tell me that they're gonna kill me or something like that. But uh, if they wanna do something to me, they know where to find me. I'm not scared of no one. But like I said, this fight was dedicated to all the Armenians that are fighting. I mean, how much does that bother you? Obviously, to, I think a lot of people that, that watch you speak up there, it's uh, getting you know pictures of dead people isn't something that really you encounter every day so I mean is it nerve-wracking at all that to kind of get threats like that or I, I love I love dealing with different types of pressures uh, every fight you deal with all kinds of different stuff so when I started getting those I was literally laughing but my coach thought I was taking it too seriously but at the end of the day I don't want no Turks no Azerbaijani dying I just want peace there's a lot of shit going on with the world the elections and all that stuff but i just want peace man i mean we could all live peaceful life we don't have to hate each other we don't have to kill each other and looping back around to the fight uh second split decision in a row did you think that uh does it make you a little nervous like to come back here to fight because it seems like this will be bellator's home from now on i i know yeah the plan to be here till march but it's yeah i, I mean it's funny saeed fought here two weeks ago we we're flying back i was sitting next to the judge and I was picking his brain. And, you know, I don't know. You, you, you can't ever leave it to judges' hands, but, man, I, I for sure won that unanimous. I don't think I won split. Talk about what was at stake there. Did you feel like your back was up against the wall a little bit just with the, with the bad luck you've been having recently, or, or did, did, you not even, did that thought not even enter your mind coming into this? Oh, of course. Uh, a week ago, I saw the list of fighters Bellator cut, and I was like, holy shit. I want to keep my job. This is what I do 24 seven. I train, uh, I cut down my old bad habits. I used to uh, uh, smoke a lot of weed, stop that. I have three kids. I know I have a lot of talent and I could bring a big force in this division. And like I said, I wanna fight the big names. If Ben Henderson is done, good luck to him. If he's not done, I would like to get that fight. But my ultimate goal is to be champion here and Patricio Pitbull is holding up the division and there's something has to happen so we could either give it to his brother or something. Last one for me, you mentioned Miles Jerry earlier. Was it the decision that was frustrating to you? Did you not like the way he handled it or, or kind of, what? why do you want to have that fight at some point down the road? I honestly thought I won. I was pressuring the whole fight. I was the most aggressive in that fight. He, he was just fighting like a YouTuber, man. He was just scared and just point fighting, but you know, I enjoyed when I watched, when I saw him in the hospital, he was limping pretty bad. And, you know, I will, if he wants to give me that rematch, yes. But if not, fuck him. I don't care about him. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next question will come from the line of Donna Corby. Go ahead, Donna. Donna, go ahead. Sorry, my mic is muted. What's up? Uh, can you hear me now? 
Yep, yep, yep. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. Um, you sound like you're not the biggest fan of Miles Jury. I know your previous opponent, Paul Redmond, you and him have a fantastic relationship. You and Miles Jury, you, you just you don't like the guy? What's the, the issue? Yeah, I just, uh, it's not like I don't like him. He's, he's a good person, man. But uh, as a fighter, I don't respect him, you know? Just uh, after you win by split decision, you come here and you talk about titles and stuff like that. But he has to promote himself. Uh, uh, I just want that fight. You know, I want that fight. I know I won the first time. And, you know, I just can't leave it to judges to end, especially the Mohegan Sun. Two times inside this uh, sort of Bellator COVID bubble. Um, how have you found adjusting to that? And did you find it a little easier this time knowing what you were in for? Of course. Uh, man, talking about Bellator, I have to give a shout out to every single employee that works for Bellator. They've been here for more than four weeks. They're still going to be here for another two weeks. I only come here for a week. It's my job. I have to follow the protocols, keep the, wear the mask, get tested. And, you know, I, I, I respect Bellator. I respect all the employees and I just follow the rules. You know, at the end of the day, this is my job and I'm here to fight. Keith Schillen. Hey, Georgie, Keith Schillen from SureDog. Congratulations on the victory. Thank uh, you, brother. Thank you. My first question. So you recently moved uh, up to lightweight from featherweight where you were there for a really long time. Uh, how much better do you feel on at lightweight? Is that why we're seeing such you know such improvement from you? I feel really good. Uh, at featherweight, I was focused too much on cutting weight. Three weeks leading into the fight, at lightweight, I'm just focused on getting better. Uh, I come here, the weight cut is easy, and like I said, I'm not just here to be your normal fighter. I'm here to make a statement. I want to fight for that belt, and I'll do whatever it takes. If they want me to fight LFA champ, I'll fight him. If they want me to fight anybody else, I'll do it. You know, I'm here to fight. Well, uh, we'll talk about the division for a second. You said that uh, Pitbull's holding up the division. He said in a recent interview if his brother was offered a title shot, he would give it up. Just talk about the whole the division as a whole. Like, what do you think and where do you stand? Um, I'm not going to decide where I stand. I let the boss, the Bellator people decide. But uh, the bottom line is, Pitbull is in a featherweight tournament. He does own two belts. All the respect to him. But we need to find out, you know, what's going to happen with that 55. There's few fighters that are just sitting there and waiting. Goichi is waiting. Uh, I know Patricky got injured his last fight. But, uh, you know, there's few fighters that are just waiting. They're sitting and waiting for the perfect time. At the end of the day, I'm the one that's fighting the most. And I'm getting more experience. And I'm getting a lot of cage time. You know, with the sport, you collect dust if you sit down. So this, the window is very, very, very short. And all I'm doing is staying busy. And me staying busy, I'm going to get close to that title. We'll take a couple more here. Luis? Hi. Congratulations for your winning, for your win. Uh, you Thank were you. the main event in the prelim card. Did you feel surprised to be in this position? No. No, 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 no. I'm not the Georgie that I was before. Um, I'm very happy that I get to fight three times this year. Uh, I get to fight, do what I love to do, and come back home, support my family. Uh, my page don't change, even if I'm the first fight on prelims or the last fight. They still pay me the same, so I'm happy, man. In. <laughs> Simon, go ahead. Uh, hey, Georgie, congratulations on the win. I just have this one special question for you here. How did you mentally prepare with the uh, tough situations you encountered uh, for this fight so that you had tonight? Uh, what, what situations, sir? Like the tough situations uh, with the text messages you encountered uh, previously. Oh, I just ignored it. Uh, I have a lot, a lot of friends that are in the law enforcement. Um, bef I, I, before fighting, I used to want to become a police officer. My dad is a ex-cop. So I just forwarded those text messages to my friends and <laughs> told them to take care of it. But I, I, I just ignore that. You know, it doesn't bother me. You know, if I let those things bother me, I should retire from fighting. So it was funny. Go ahead, G. Great. Thanks for the time, Georgie. Congrats. Thank you, guys. Thank you.